Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, we're going to take a look at Fedora Silver Blue. So Silver Blue was released back at the end of April of this year for the version 30. It's been out for a while. Uh, there's been versions of it for Fedora 29 and so forth. Uh, basically, Fedora Silver Blue is a, a system that is implemented on top of OS Tree. And OS Tree is an immutable uh, operating system. Basically means that you have version control over any changes that you make into the uh, local host environment. So uh, that's really the main purpose behind it is it allows you to roll back from changes that may have damaged your configuration or maybe there are packages that you just want to get rid of without having to reload your OS. And so you can do that fairly easily uh, and we'll talk about and show you how to do that today. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drop out of their website. You can go there and learn. There's a lot of details, a lot of documentation and a very good, strong community in which you can get help with the install. So I'm going to be using uh, Boxes today, which is a GNOME uh, uh, front end to QEMU. Uh, the reason I'm using Boxes is simply because I have not been successful in getting VirtualBox to work with this latest version of uh, Silver Blue. Uh, at least under Fedora, it airs out. so. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna start with that. So to install uh, it, uh, you pick the uh, the uh, distribution or the ISO file in which you want to load from, and then in boxes it gives you some. Uh, you can you can make it an express install, or you can say I, no, I think I want to do some customization with it, and we definitely want to do that. So we'll give it some memory, and we'll give it a little bit of disk and then we'll start the install. Now you'll notice that it says you've got uh, some problems with your graphics driver, and so I'm gonna go ahead and disable that. And if I pop over here, it should come up into the uh, system correctly. So I just had to disable the 3D accelerations on, on uh, QEMU uh, -E in order for it to work. So uh, in a few minutes, it should bring up Anaconda and then load the GUI. Uh, I don't think I need to check the disk though. So we'll bypass that. And we'll wait for the GUI to come up. And there we go. So uh, in, in, uh, in boxes, you don't have a, there's no drivers that you need to install in order to get uh, uh, guest, uh, guest special uh, things like being able to load a driver and so forth. So we'll go ahead and continue. It set my keyboard to US, the language is US, and it found my time zone correctly. This one bears a little bit of, uh, I'm gonna stop here for a minute and explain some things. Now, if you're used to going in and setting up your own partitions uh, for the different uh, directories under your root file system, uh, don't. Uh, in, uh, in Silverblue, you don't wanna do that because it is going to change root. It's going to do a, ch a chroot into its own system. And if you do that, you risk damaging uh, those linkages. Uh, there are two directories you can, you can mount independently of the system, and that would be boot and also uh, slash bar. Anything else, though? No, <laughs> not a good idea. And you probably would end up with a, uh, a unbootable system if you did that. Now the uh, utility that creates the partitions in, uh, in the Fedora install will let you go ahead and do that without warning. So <laughs> anyway, uh, I could go ahead and start the installation here and then it would just go through the normal Fedora install. I'm not gonna waste time with that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and quit out of this. And I already have one that's up and running, so we'll switch over there. Uh, this would be the base install. And I can show you that when we get in into the system, that is. Well, if I type the right password, I might be able to get in. Um, so it, it's going to load GNOME, uh, and I'm not a big fan of that. But you can 
uh, from the OS tree, uh, the RPM OS tree install, you can go ahead and install uh, your your favorite uh, desktop uh, management system if you if you uh, have one that you like uh, better. Of course, <laughs> I don't know too many people that like GNOME anymore, but if you're one of those, then you can run it as well. Uh, there is versions of Cinnamon and uh, I think. Uh, well, it, it, all the ones that anyway that ships with Fedora. So I'm gonna go over here and load up a terminal. I'm gonna set this up so that I can use this later. I'm not gonna just zoom into it. I'm actually gonna fix it for, for me to be able to use later because I'd like to actually use this install, uh, except I'm not quite that blind. Okay, so hopefully you can see that a little bit better. Um, it, it has all the same commands as a as a, a basic Fedora install, uh, except that's missing. That's missing. So you don't have any package management uh, that is traditional. What you use instead is the RPM OS tree. And right now I'm going to do a status on it. It should be. Yeah, it's in the middle of uh, updates right now, so it's busy. And this is the base install, and it will list the deployments. Um, so if I were to install a package, and it just says it's done, so I, I can go ahead and, and install those updates now. So in, just to give you some information, this is the base install, the base version, uh, and it gives you a commit ID and a signature and so forth. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're actually going to use RPM OS tree to do our up, update. And it's going to pull down the packages, uh, the RPM packages that it needs in order to be able to provide that update. And then I'll, we'll come back to the RPM OS tree and we'll, and I'll show you what it did uh, to the system. So it's done and I can, I can roll back here and look at all the packages that installed. Uh, or we can just go ahead and do this. And right now it is idle. The system's idle. Uh, the automatic updates are not on. And the deployments that we have, this is the active one with the dot. And this is the new one it just created. And in here it tells me that there are, are some differences. There are 454 upgraded packages, one downgraded, three removed, and 13 added. So in order for me to get to that particular package, uh, I would have to um, actually go in and reboot the system. But before I do that, yeah, it's telling me it's already applied all those. So I just want to make sure that, that was, it was going to do that. So. Uh, normally I would just do a reboot, but that's not how you want to do it here. So what you really want to do is do it through system control. Uh, and that allows it to uh, flush the cache and make sure that all the changes are written to the disk before you actually do this, this restart. Uh, <clears throat> it's dangerous to do it the other way uh, because you might end up with an unbootable system afterwards. So right now what it's doing is it's discovering that I have a new, uh, a new deployment and it's going to roll into that new deployment and we'll start running on the updates. So uh, I think the basic thing here, the, the basic takeaway here is that if you install packages through the RPM OS tree, and you can, you can most certainly do that. Uh, as you'll notice, there is an install command. Well, one of the things that I, I kind of miss with this is that there isn't a search. I mean, sometimes it's kind of nice to be able to search for uh, a close approximation to the name of the package and then have it come back and tell you what the package is. That's missing from here. And since I don't have yum or uh, uh, DNF, and I don't know if there's if there's any search capabilities in here or not, uh, well, there's an RPM query, but I, those are going to be for, 
I think that's the, yeah, that's the one that normally goes for what's already out here. So it's probably going to say, yeah, it's not installed. So that's not what I want. I want to, I want to search like DNF does a search uh, in order to go out to the, the package registry and look. So, but that's not here. So the first thing I need to do right now is I need to go uh, out to the flat hub. And the reason I need to go out to flat hub, the flat packs are the normal mechanism for installing packages on silver blue. It is the, it, it's the best way to do it because uh, it does not impact the immutability of the system. Flat packs kind of sit off to the side. And so uh, they don't disturb the uh, mutable uh, part of the, the immutable part of the host. So I'm going to go ahead. And now I picked what I did there as I picked the quick setup, and then I picked Fedora uh, to do this. And I probably will have to reboot in order for it to see this, even though it's not going to create a distribution. Uh, I think this might just be a problem with the cache that's in here. I'll roll back, but I don't think it's going to see it. Yeah, it doesn't see it. So, we will go ahead. And reboot the system. And hopefully, uh, it will bring up the flat packs. If not, I may have to reinstall that package and reboot again. But we'll try it. I've had some issues with this. Uh, I haven't checked to see if someone's reported a bug, but if they haven't, I will. I'll, I'll report a bug on this if, if, if it's not, if it is a bug. But I think probably need to do a little bit more checking and look at the logs and make sure that it's not something dumb that I'm doing, which is possible. <laughs> it's always possible. Um, let me get this up, and then we'll go back and take a look at the, and see if it, yes. So now it's actually seen that I have entered the new registry and it has actually loaded that. So that's good. So at this point, I should be able to see packages that are actually out here. Yes. Um, I don't know a small one, but I know some things that I would want on here. Uh, and that, but uh, you know, that these are just normal installs for flat packs, which I'm sure all you people know how to do already. And if not, it's just a matter of clicking it and then hit the install. The um, the other thing that you have is toolboxes. Uh, toolboxes are containers. Uh, these are built off of Podman. And the images for those containers are built with uh, Builda, uh, Builda, Builda. And uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, so they're going to look a little bit like Docker. Uh, they're going to have an OS that's wrapped inside of it. There are two types of containers normally. There, there are thin containers which use the operating system that's on the the uh, uh, the master uh, system or the local host. There are thick containers which install their own operating system and then they use a version of that. Uh, toolbox falls into the latter. It falls into the thick uh, container uh, mechanism, as does Docker. Uh, but there are some container types like the ones under Solaris. They do run thin and, uh, and, and they will uh, protect the, that part of the root uh, of the container. But these containers are self-contained. Uh, so let's do... Uh, Let's do a create, and by default, uh, the toolbox, toolbox, no, I don't think so. Let's try toolbox. So by default, it should go out and download the uh, Fedora uh, 30 operating system and, uh, and then put that into the uh, directory that will be shared by anything else that wants to use that particular one. Now, you could have, I could have downloaded Fedora 29 uh, or 28 and installed those, and that wouldn't have been a problem at all. So uh, I'm going to give this a few minutes to kind of recover. We'll do a toolbox list. And you'll notice that this does look indeed a little bit like Docker, a little bit like Docker. It has kind of the same uh, uh, vernacular and, and uh, the kind of the same uh, kind of layout for the display, but it is assuredly not Docker. Um, so if I, uh, if I want to enter this, I want to get into that system. Uh, now, because I only have one, I don't have to tell it which container I want. But if you, if I had more than one, I would put a slash C, and then I would put Fedora.
and there we go. So you'll you'll notice the difference here between the uh, the uh, shell prompt. This is a normal. This is the local host share shell prompt, and this is the one you get under toolbox. It's a dot, the username, and then the word toolbox. One of my complaints with this is that. And I, I probably could go in and read the variable and then and then put it into the prompt myself, but I wish it would just do it for me. Uh, and that is tell me which container I'm running on uh, because I, I have a bad habit of doing the wrong things on the wrong container. So, uh, but you'll notice that yum is back, DNF is back. I can do a, let's say I want HTOP. And now you'll notice that it's going after the Fedora Modular 30, which is the uh, minimali minimized version of the Fedora OS, uh, and, and installing a package from there. Hopefully, HTOP. <laughs> and then I'll, I'll show you a couple other things with this. Um, and so this is kind of nice in that I can then create these toolboxes or containers, and then do some development, bring down packages that I need specifically for that project, and then when I'm done, I can either just put that container aside and create a new container for the next project. I can throw it away if I want. I can archive it, whatever I need to do uh, in order to do that. So now it's installed, hopefully. Uh, yep, it sure is. So if I want to get out of the toolbox, I just simply type exit, and then it takes me back out to the local host. Uh, one thing I was gonna tell you is that um, uh, the your user your home directory is shared so let's go back in now you don't need again you don't need that container ID if it's the only one on the system you can just do a toolbox enter but uh, if I do an LS there's the uh, file I just created in the local host and I can I can edit that And the local host sees the changes. So this directory is definitely uh, definitely shared between the two. Uh, what else can I tell you about this? Oh, uh, drivers. Uh, you have an NVIDIA card. You have an AMD card. And you need to load the drivers for those. You have to do that under RPM OS tree. Uh, and, the simple, and it's because you have to create that, that, rolling, uh, um, that rolling release in order to do that you have to create the get past the immutability because if you try to install a driver by itself uh, it won't work it, it won't even install it'll just fail so with as far as nvidia is concerned there are instructions that are out in the community site on how to do that it is not the normal uh, way of installing the nvidia driver of course some people have had success with it and some people have not I don't know, I have not tried personally with this yet under on a, uh, a bare metal system install. Obviously, I've just been playing with it under a, a VM in order to, you know, check it out, see if it works. But I hope you enjoyed this. There's kind of a, a brief look at Silver Blue, and uh, I'll probably as I play with it and discover new things, I'll come back and, uh, and talk about this some more. Uh, but that's going to do it for now, and hope to see you next time. Bye for now. Thank you.